Today I'm visiting Level 1 in Louisville, Kentucky, and our tour guide today is Chris. Hey, I'm Chris Seaprack. I'm the micro kernel of Level 1. This is uh, Hackerspace in Louisville, Kentucky. Come on inside. Oh, this is Ben. This is Dan's dog. He visits here quite frequently. Um, this is Level 1 proper here. Uh, this is about... I think 2,000 square feet that we officially rent from our landlord. Um, you can see the basics here. We've got a library to first come in full of technical manuals. Um, come a little bit further this way. We've got various tool cabinets, uh, soldering equipment. Oh, this is mine. I need to put that back. Uh, general access workstations, Roombas. Place is a little bit in a disarray. As you can see, we got lots of action going on. Uh, this is our fail board. People put up projects that they've fried or otherwise screwed up, so uh, everybody can see them and learn from those mistakes, hopefully. Uh, as you come in here, uh, I'll direct your attention to here. This is a cryogenic test chamber that was built by the White Star Balloon Group that we have here to be able to test electronics at negative 50 degrees uh, because they're going to be sending a balloon up into the upper reaches of the atmosphere and they got to make sure that electronic stuff works. But it's an old freezer chamber that's been uh, kind of hacked together. Uh, over on this area, we've got a couple of things going on here. Uh, this is one of the, I think this is Speedball 1, uh, the first prototype for the White Star Balloon Project. Uh, electronic housing. This, of course, doesn't have the giant balloon attached to it, but you can see the basics of the ballast system. Uh, this is a Power Wheels racer that uh, a couple of our members are putting together uh, for the Maker Fair coming up in Detroit for the entry. I think they named it Steve. So they're working on this. Um, various sundries over here. A lot of this is White Star Balloon Project stuff. Light box for taking photos. Um, over here, we've got an RFID system, entry system that is just being waiting to put into place here. We just got to do the mounting on the electric strike and such. Uh, over here, uh, some general space storage for people's projects and equipment. Again, we got a lot of stuff going on here. It's not usually this messy, but uh, this is an electric bike conversion that I'm working on. Uh, basically, just taking an old road bike and packing together parts and donated battery systems and such. Uh, this is what this place used to be. The Okinawa Health Club. So this used to be a uh, Oriental massage parlor back before it became a, a hacker space. Um, this is a pony that's being modified to breathe fire. Uh, they actually have to rewire the brain right now because it is sound sensitive and so it'll turn towards sound and they need to crosswire it so it turns away from sound when it's spinning fire. Uh, AV cabinet, uh, kind of a chill out space. As you can see, Ben's chilling out right now. Uh, projector screens. Uh, over this way, you can see folks working at our various tables and benches that we have laying out here. Uh, one of our members put together, this is a part store. It's an honor system part store, so if you ever need, you're working on some late night project, you need some resistors, some headers, some capacitors, wire, something that you need, and Radio Shack is closed, or Radio Shack doesn't have what you need. Uh, this is available 24 hours a day to anybody who wants to come by and pick up some stuff. Of course, we've got a maker bot right now that we're uh, in the process of uh, fixing up some, some upgrades that we have on it. Um, this is the control system here. This is uh, our Oculus Level 1 camera. So this is a camera that has an iFi card attached to it that you take photos with it, it automatically updates them to our Flickr pool. Um, there's some wizardry on a cron script that goes through and takes these pictures and puts them into various groups and tweets them and such like that. But this is a great addition for any hackerspace because you'll document a lot of projects if you just have something that you can push one button and get the photo and it's out. Uh, this is a new addition we just got in today. We're currently setting up. This is a full spectrum 40 watt laser cutter. Um, so the folks are furiously working to get this in place and hope to be lasering lots of things pretty soon. Uh, this is a donated vending machine that we have for snacks. It actually doesn't take coinage. We took out the electronics and you can push the buttons, but everything is on honor system here as well for drinks and such like that. Uh, kitchenette area, you can see very good and microwave and sustenance items. And I'll take you over here. Um, 
No. Here we've got uh, two restrooms. Uh, that have been built in that we had the landlord put in uh, spec for us. One of them is uh, handicap acceptable. Uh, I'll take you into the big room. This isn't what we officially rent, but we have de facto access to it. This is the grand room here. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Probably about 6,000 square feet. Um, but you can see our projects kind of migrate out to here when we need them. Uh, it gets kind of brutal in the summer um, and in the winter because we don't have any temperature control out here. But uh, it's nice enough to be able to occupy this space for parties, workshops, presentations, um, and any kind of big projects such as inflating giant balloons. Um, really nice ceiling tiles, too. So we just had our one year anniversary come up this uh, early June and uh, we had a big party up here. And what's up in the loft? Oh, up in this loft, uh, this is, we got folks that like to do music stuff here. And so, we don't have to go all the way up. Yeah, we don't have to go. But it's uh, basically just music equipment. People like to hang out there and just kind of jam around. And back through here, um, I think people were playing some experiments with some high frequency corona surface treaters to basically make some lightning. Um, we've got a this is Mark. This is we've got a large whiteboard. Our landlord actually put this in for us, so this is incredibly useful going through and uh, you know getting all your phone numbers and detailing projects and stuff. So nice. We've got a whole swath of oscilloscopes that have shown up here. These things breed like rabbits. They keep on showing up, and uh, we keep taking them. Uh, along here, you can see we've got soldering irons, various tools and equipment, battery things laying out here, different pieces of equipment for making circuit boards, sewing machines. Um, this is a project that I'm working on here. Uh, I run a group that meets every other Monday, and we're designing an isomorphic keyboard. So this is a musical keyboard that uh, it's an isomorphic design, so when you're doing chord, chord changes, you don't actually change your hand shape as you're moving it. You just keep the hand shape the same and just move the position. Interesting thing about this is these are velocity sensitive keys. There's two boards that are sandwiched together. And so these cherry switches, as they go through, there's a plunger that goes through and activates the second one. And as the scanning matrix goes through, it can record the time uh, derivative between the two key presses and be able to get velocity sensitivity and export that to MIDI. Um, general access workstations over here as well. You know, we have lots of movies. We have movie nights here. All people working on projects. Uh, Oh yeah, absolutely. Jose, let's see your uh, micro laser here. This is a micro laser cutter. It was designed to have a laser cutter and a race to beat the one we had purchased, the large one. Uh, basically what you have are two motors that are basically driving screws to move a platform. A second motor which drives uh, the other axis, so the, the up and down Y, X, it carries the head from a fiber optic line, which connects the small laser, to uh, 750 milliwatts, 830 nanometers, to a control system. Basic Arduino does the movement, optical isolation for the motors, a control system that uses flip-flops, hex buffers, and NAND gates, basically the old 70s technology to create a simple step, step sig uh, signal for the step motors and regulate the power supply and a relay which is used to switch the laser off and on. Cool. Thank you. Where's your uh, test, test plastic piece? It's in the box. Oh, in the box. We'll find it later. Okay. All right. Excellent. So it's a working micro laser cutter. Yeah. Amazing stuff. And that was a project that was uh, completely out of spite. Uh, he thought for sure that he could get a, a laser cutter done um, before we actually went through the process of funding one. It took us about two months from idea to actual fundraising to purchase to get it. And he did beat us. It. it was working yesterday, right before we got <laughs> Downstairs here, we have a 
more facilities. This is um, an area that's occupied by KIPCUG. KIPCUG is an organization that's been around since the 80s, Kentucky, Indiana, PC Users Group. Uh, their mission has been to take old desktop systems and refurbish them for use for disadvantaged kids in the Jefferson County Public School System. Uh, they were moving out of their old space or being forcibly removed from their old space. Uh, we invited them here and they've set up shop here. So. Uh, in here, this is our boneyard. This is a place where we have just general electronic equipment that people uh, want to see recycled in some fashion, uh, whether it be stuff, taking uh, motors out of uh, printers for stepper controls for different various systems or, or what have you. This is all freely available for people to take and reuse. Uh, we have servers running various systems from like, you know, firewall boxes to uh, weather simulation software for the White Star Balloon Project. And then this is our shop area. Um, you can see a lot of, you know, basic woodworking tools, saws, drill presses, uh, lathes, uh, things for general use there. Um, and then back here as well, we've got a CNC machine that one of our members put together. And uh, a fair amount of use as well. One thing you'll notice is that on most of our equipment that we have here, pretty much everything, we have these QR codes. This is a QR coding system that we've developed that uses a wiki template to automatically generate the QR code. So if you ever need to know what this device is, who it belongs to, its serial number, manuals, or anything, you don't have to find you know, people around the space to do it. You scan it with your phone, you can go right to it. So it's a pretty good system that's worked out very well for us. Um, and that's about it. This is, uh, of course, the forbidden zone. You don't want to go from there. Uh, it goes into uh, a much larger cabin. That's it. All right. Thanks a lot for the tour of Level 1 in Louisville, Kentucky. All right. Thank you.